When you switch to Tiling Window Manager, one of the hardest things to do is learn the key bindings, especially if you've never used a Tiling Window Manager before, because chances are you've never used a keyboard-centric workflow before. Usually you use just your mouse and your keyboard in kind of tandem, and when you switch to Tiler, you're much more apt to use your keyboard because that's kind of the way Tiling Window Managers are meant to be used. So the question becomes, how do you become more efficient actually using those key bindings? So today what I'm going to do is create a script called a key binding cheat sheet. And what it will do is it will bring up a terminal with a list of all of the key bindings in your window manager so that you can gaze upon them and remind yourself what the key binding is you're searching for. So this is not an original idea. So I just before I jump in, I want to say that I got this idea, blatantly stole this idea, I should say, from the Linux dabbler who did a similar script on Spectre WM uh, a couple months ago. He got the idea from Awesome. Now, Awesome and Xmonad have these things built in already. So you, if you're using those window managers, you don't need to do this. If you're using something like DWM or Spectre WM or Qtile or Herb's Luff, maybe. I don't know if Herb's Luff has, Herb's Luff has it or not. Uh, I haven't used Herb's Luff nearly enough to know that for sure. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm just going to say that this does not have the how-to words in the title because this is not going to be a specifically a how-to. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be doing, but it's going to be all done right here live on camera. So there's likely to going to be some mistakes. So let's just go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we need to do is actually create the script or a file for the script. We'll just call this cs.sh for now. And so we'll do touch cs.sh. Okay, and then what we're going to do is make this executable. So we're going to do ch mod plus x cs.sh. And then we're going to vim into this. So I have an alias called v. So when you see me use the letter v, I'm just using nvim. Uh, so there's nothing special there about it. It's just regular vim. Or in this case, nvim, I guess. So cs. Dot sh. I suppose I should zoom in here so that I can actually, you can actually see this. Okay. So now we have our file. So the first thing we need to do is create a shebang. So I always get the shebang wrong uh, because dyslexia happens or something. I don't know. So we do pound sign exclamation point slash bin slash bash. Uh, you can also do slash sh. It works perfectly fine. Uh, I'm not as much of a scripter as other people, so telling you what the difference is is something that somebody else will have to do. Uh, I'm sure somebody in the comments will come along and say, Matt, this is what the difference is between bash and sh. They're two different shells. I know that part. Uh, I just don't know why you'd use one or the other. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the first thing we need to do is take a look at our configuration file. Now this is DWM. So the process for this will be a little bit different depending on what window manager you're using. But the skeleton of it at least should be the same. So my configuration file is located in my suckless folder which is in dot config. So we're going to cd into dot config suckless and then DWM. And if we do an ls here, my configuration file is actually config.h. So we're going to vim into config.h. Now, we'll change the size of this just a little bit. And if we scroll down here quite a bit, we will see the beginnings of our key bindings and what we need to search for. You know, scrolling down more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Okay, so what we're looking for is all of the key bindings we have usually either have mod key or they have this xk underscore p. Now, a lot of other window managers actually use this syntax as well for key bindings, so you may be able to even use this script. But basically what you're doing here is you want to find something in the configuration file that all the key bindings have in common. So whether that's um, 
like in i3 i'm not sure what you'd you'd actually be able to pull out because everything is going to be a little bit different so like if i go to a different workspace here and we open up my sxhkd file and we look at this in here how i would go about making a cheat sheet for this would be a little bit different because every single thing here has it looks a little different so i'd have to go through and i'd have to pull out super i'd have to pull out control and i would have to pull out alt because that's pretty much all of these have you know that thing plus this is a little bit harder because they're on two lines so instead of the way uh grep works it's only going to pull out the things that are on the same line so if you use SXHKD, specifically if you're using like BSPWM, creating a cheat sheet is going to be quite a bit harder. But we're not in a BSPWM, we're in DWM, so it's going to be fairly easy. So if we go back to, oops, that's not the right workspace. That was Audacity. You've seen how the sausage is made. It's recording. That's what it does. <laughs> All right, so... Now we have, at least in DWM here, and like I said, the window manager you use is going to be a little bit different. But what we need to do now, now that we have that commonality that we've pointed out, we can make this a little bit smaller. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to need it. So we can actually close it. So what we want to do is pull out all of those things that have those certain commonalities and list them out. So what we're going to do is use the command grep and what we're going to do is we're going to grep x k because if you remember and i shouldn't have closed that i guess but if you remember in the configuration file every single key binding had x k underscore as a part of that line so if i do that i need to tell grep what file i want it to search through so in this case it's dollar sign home slash dot config slash suckless slash dwm slash config oops i can't spell config dot h and i'm going to actually give it dot def dot h that way it's always searching the default configuration file just in case i've made some changes to the config dot h file nothing changes uh it's probably better to do this one okay so then what we're going to do is pipe that so this is the pipe this if you if you're not familiar the pipe is located under your backspace key it, and you'll need to do a shift in order to get to it so we're going to pipe that and in, end into awk now awk is a very complicated command it's some people call it i guess a language in and of itself and i'm not an expert in using it like not at all so I can't exactly tell you precisely how it works in every facet, so uh, there are great tutorials out there if you want to learn how to use awk. Uh, I definitely would go through and check that out if you're more interested in. Eventually, I will learn more about it, but the process, the, the progress is slow. So what we're wanting to do here is we're going to want to use awk to print out a certain thing of each line that grep finds. So we're going to open... Uh, put in some brackets here so these are curly brackets and then we need single quotes and we want to use the command print okay and then what we want to do it actually we're going to do is go to, to a different workspace here we're going to reopen up my configuration file so we're going to do cd into dot config and we're going to vim config dot def dot h and if we scroll down here again and what we want to do is we want to print out the second thing here so we're going to want to, so this is the first key the modifier key and then we're going to want to print out uh, the second thing here which is the actual key press and then we want to print out the thing that it the key press does so that's number four so we're doing two three four you, you'll see what i mean when i get there and then what we're going to want to do is do the seventh one. So I've written this down before. Uh, so this is two, three, four, five, six, and I believe seven. It may print out this whole part here. I can't remember how it does it. Uh, DWM is going to be a little bit harder here because the stuff here in the seventh is a little weird because you don't always need it. 
but because sometimes you're spa what you're spawning is over here in this like seventh column and the way awk counts things is a little weird sometimes it counts things sometimes it doesn't count things it's very confusing so you might have to go through and chain uh kind of play with the the count and like i said i'll show you what, what i mean by count here in a minute it's like i said awk is plenty confusing and i'm making it even more confusing as we go along so uh, basically what we want to do is tell Oct to print the position of each of these things uh, as after we as we run our command. So if we go back to this workspace here, we want to print uh, dollar sign two, which is going to be this part here, and we want to print dollar sign three. Okay, which is going to be that x k underscore whatever. And then we want to do dollar sign four. And then from my counting, at least prior to actually doing this video, uh, dollar sign seven. Um, whether or not that was the right counting or not, I don't know. Um, and then we want to close the single quotes and close the brackets. And then what we're going to want to do is save this and see what we get. So if we write and quit this and we do dot slash CS dot SH we have some, it, it's gone through and printed out stuff. So uh, it's printed out the mod key, the action key, as I'm going to call it, what the thing is doing. So in this case, in this first one here, it's spawning D menu. Uh, and then it's uh, it prints out the thing that it, it's spawning or it's doing. So the second one here is changing the focus of the stack. So if I had multiple windows here, I'd do mod J and it would switch between the windows. So... As you notice, this is a little mm, not that readable, I would say, right? So we're going to be using another command. So let's go ahead and vim back into, oops, that's not the right one, cs.sh. And of course, I can't do vc, cs.sh, there we go. All right, so now we want to go back into insert mode, and we want to clean that up. Quite a bit. So we're, in order to do that, we're going to go through and do, uh, we're going to use the sed command. So basically what sed is going to do is it's going to search for something and then it's going to replace something. So uh, sed is another one of those uh, commands that is very multi-purpose. You can use it for many different things. It's not as multi-purpose as awk, obviously, because uh, there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with awk. But in this case, we're going to be using sed in order to do some global searching and to remove some stuff so pipe again and then said and then we're going to do single quotes or inverted commas as the British would say I think so we're going to do search and we're going to search for uh, the comma so if we go back to seven when we printed this out we got a whole bunch of extra commas we get this comma we get this comma we get this comma there's a comma back here somewhere and stuff so we want to get rid of all those so we're going to search for the commas we're going to replace it with space so we're just going to leave that empty and then you want to do that globally okay and now if we save this and we go to a different workspace and we just zoom in here and we we run dot slash csh again cs dot sh i should have made that something a little bit easier to say now we've gone through and gotten rid of all the commas now this is still very unreadable so let's go ahead and clear that and we'll run it again here in this we'll keep this open so i'm actually going to go back here to awk and add some stuff so if in between these we put in some spaces and actually what i'm going to do is add some dash 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 here and delete those spaces and then we'll add a space in between here Okay, and then this already will clean this up quite a bit. So if we go back to this workspace and run this again, we now we have at least some spaces. So we're getting there. So if we go back to this workspace, we can go to the end of the line here. And for whatever reason, Google decided it was going to listen to me at that point. I didn't say anything about Google. Uh, <laughs> okay, and then we're going to pipe again, and we're going to do some more sed. So this next one... We're going to want to get rid of all of the, if we go back here, I want to get rid of all the XK underscores, because we don't really need those things. 
So we just want mod key Y to know that we're toggling the scratch pad. So if I hit mod key Y, I get a scratch pad. I don't need mod key XK underscore, right? So we just go back here and do said, and then inverted commas, and we're going to do search for XK underscore, and then we're going to replace that with nothing, okay? And we're going to do that globally, okay? That's how said works. Okay, so if we save this again, and we go back here to 8, and we clear this out, and we run it the script again, now we've gotten rid of all the XK underscores. So we just mod key left, and then it tells you it's focusing the monitor, right? So that's the way that works. Okay, so the next thing we want to get rid of is some of the amper stands. So... I don't know why I wanted to get rid of this because I actually don't. S oh, I do see some like these these amper stands up here. We don't really need that. Okay. So we're gonna get rid of that next, and we're gonna do two in a, in a row, two things right in a row here. So we're gonna do said inverted commas s. So we're gonna search for amper stands. And we're going to replace them with nothing, and we're gonna do that globally. Okay, and then we're gonna do another one said inverted commas and this one we're, we're going to actually change something so if we go back here to the script output we'll see the shift mask thing here we want to replace this pipe shift mask with just plus shift so we're going to go back to the thing here we're going to do we're going to search for pipe sh shift mask I think that's all uh, no it's it's done this way shift mask okay and then we're going to replace that with sh plus I think we have to leave a space plus shift okay and then we're going to do that globally okay now if we save this again and go back here and we'll clear this and we'll run the script again so now whenever we have a mod plus shift key it just says mod plus shift so now I want to change everything that says mod key just to use the word mod so again I mean this is getting very repetitious now but we're just gonna carry on we're gonna do said now if you're a scripter if you're somebody who's really good at scripting I'm sure there's more a more efficient way of doing this I'm 100% sure about this I am NOT a professional scripter uh, I'm just not I'm, I'm very much a noob so uh, I know this is probably terrible syntax, but I don't care. This is just the way it's going to do. So inverted commas, we want to search globally for mod key and replace that with mod. And we want to do that globally. Okay. And then we also want to do the same thing for control so that we did for shift. So if we do pipe said inverted commas, we're going to search for control mask which we should see here somewhere uh, let's see if I can sh like start right here oh we're gonna need to do the pipe as well so we go back here and do pipe control mask and then we want to replace that with space plus CTRL and then we want to do that globally okay we're, we're getting there so we go back here clear this and run it again now we have even more stuff cleaned up uh, we need to add a space between these things here so that we're, that's going to be take place in the awk uh, i think i deleted those spaces and said i didn't need them but i do actually need them so let's go back to and add those we also want to go through and erase this last bracket here some that some of these have so we want to get rid of that uh, and th then we want to go through and put this in a column to make it even better so let's go through let's go back here and we wanted to go through and add some spaces here to the awk space here and a space there and then we'll go back here to the end and we want to pipe said inverted commas I'm, I'm just gonna use inverted commas because it's fun uh, it's better than saying apostrophe apostrophe whatever um, and we want to do search globally for this bracket we replace it with nothing and we want to do it globally okay now we're going to write this 
actually, before we do this, I'm going to go ahead and just pipe into column. Now, column is a really cool, very unused command that's basically going to format this into columns. So, it does exactly what it says on the tin, as they say. Um, I'm turning British. I've been reading Harry Potter again, so I, everything has been British for me. So, anyways, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to go back to this workspace here, clear this out, and run the command again. And that looks so much better, right? So, this is what this, the script looks like. Now, if you've noticed, we have some problems here. So, first of all, we have some stuff over here that's just not showing up properly. So, I don't actually remember what this is, but basically what this does means is that we use the command said to filter out something that we shouldn't have. So, we'll have to fix that. And it's also not picking up all of the key bindings. So, if we actually go through to back to our configuration file here, we'll see some things here that are a little bit different. So, alright, so what ended up happening is those numbers that we showed here don't have mod in front of them at all. These things here aren't actually key bindings. They're the tag keys. Okay, they, they don't use the word mod at all, but we still picked it up because they use the, the XK underscore thing that we searched for. So we're going to have to fix that. What I'm thinking in order to get rid of those things is to change what we're grepping out. Because I think if we change the grep to just mod key, because I think all of our key bindings have mod key in some form or fashion. I don't have anything here that's not mod key. So if we go back here to the script and back to, to the beginning of the script, and we change this here to mod key. I'm wondering what this will do. So we'll go back to 8 and we'll, we'll clear that out and we'll run it again. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, unfortunately, it also gives us these things here, which we don't need because those are mouse buttons, I believe. So we need to filter those out as well. We'll also notice that we need to add, when we change the mod, because we, we, I'd like to add a plus sign in between these two, so it's just, oh, maybe we don't need to do that. It's okay, but I have a mod here with a plus sign. So, um, if we go back to the key, the script here, and we change, let's see where this is at. So first, we need to get rid of this plus here, because otherwise we'll end up with two pluses. And we change this here to space plus, and then... I think we need to add another space. No, we'll leave this. Yeah, we'll add another space just in case. We can always remove it afterwards. And we want to remove the plus here as well. Okay, so if we save this now, oops, and we go back to the script and we clear this out and run it again, that's better. Yeah, and we can get rid of that space. There's an extra space there. And there's just one here that actually could probably use another shift because I have mod control shift to actually toggle the tag. I don't actually ever use that key money, I don't think. But it doesn't matter. We're, we're trying to perfect this. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so we can get rid of that space and then we can start working on filtering out those last parts there, which is going to be a little bit more interesting. So what we need to do is actually add a plus after shift and control. So if we go back here and do this here and do plus after this and we remove the space after this I believe is what I said I needed to, to remove um, yes there's because there's a space up there at dollar sign three okay and then we can add a plus after the end of this and a space and that will take care of some of those stragglers there at the end that didn't have pluses so if we run this again now we have some pluses here. So mod plus control plus shift plus key. Yeah, that works out well. Okay. Now. Um, like I said, now we have to go through and get rid of these last parts here. My foam is falling. That stayed up there a long time, like a whole day. 
scared the crap out of me, too. <laughs> Double-sided tape, apparently. Not so sticky. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else going to fall on my head? At least it's foam. It's not going to hurt me. Not that there's much up there to hurt anyways. Empty brain. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm less likely now to actually figure this out because I don't remember where I was. Okay. Um, we need to remove these things. I, I, I'm sure there's a command or something that I could use to do it. Let me think about it. A few moments later. Okay, so I think I've got it. So if we go back here to the beginning and we change this back to XK underscore. XK underscore. And then we go here before the awk and do another grep. So grep. And then we want to do mod key. Okay. And it's going to grep the same thing because it should work. Uh, we're going to try this out. Uh, I don't know why I think this will work, but I think it will work. So if we clear this out and run this again, huzzah, it worked. Hot damn. That was good. <laughs> okay, so that is the script. Now, like I said, depending on what window manager you're in, this is going to be a lot harder because if the key bindings you have don't have commonalities like XK underscore or mod key or super or whatever, you're going to have more greps than what I had. So, for like I said, if you remember back when I was looking at my SXHKD file, every one of those bindings was on a separate line. So that was going to be a big pain in the butt. So I don't know how you'd go about doing this with an XX with an SXHKD file. It'd be a little bit hard quite a bit harder if not impossible to begin with it, it might just be better to if you, in, in that case if we clear this out let's just say i wanted to to add all right so i have the script so and i use sxhkd so if we're here and we go to the end we could also go through and cat dollar sign home slash dot dwm slash sxhkd slash sxhkdrc so and then we want to also pipe that into i don't know if piping this into column would work but we're going to try because we want it to look as pretty as possible so if we go up here to eight and run this thing again yeah that didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to so piping it into column didn't work why it didn't work has something to do with the way column probably works. But this what does at least get you those things. So the reason why you can't use cat for the your main configuration file is because that would just print out what cat does is it just prints out everything that's in the file. And that works for the SXHKD thing because all that's in that or that configuration file for the SXHKD is key bindings. Uh, how I'd go through about making that pretty, I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, I'm not sure why, like I said, I'm assuming that that's a limitation of column. A few moments later. So I've been playing around with this for a little while now, uh, off camera, and uh, I can't seem to make this any prettier. It, it's still just exporting it like this. I'm sure there's a way, and I will discover it probably about a half an hour after I stop recording. So if, if I do discover this, I'll put it in the comments below and pin the comment. But uh, if you're using something like SXHKD, this would be the way you'd go about creating a cheap sh uh, cheat sheet. Just cat it out and then put it into a key binding or whatever. So that's the last step. Now that we have... Oops, went to the wrong thing again. That was Audacity. It records things. <laughs> Now that we have this done, and I'm actually just going to delete this last part here until I figure out how to make that pretty. Now that we have that done, we'll save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to sudo cp this into this csh.sh into slash user local bin. Now this is 
uh, one of the files that is in my path. And what that will allow me to do is run this command from anywhere on the system. I don't actually have to be in the directory that the, the script is located in. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to enter my password. Okay, now if I run cs.sh, I don't actually have to do dot slash, and I can do that from, I can you literally use this script from anywhere. Now, what I can do is, if you're just using plain old DWM and you're not using SXHKD, you can go through and add a uh, key binding to your SXHK or your to your DWM uh, configuration file to bring this up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my SXHKD file. So I'm going to do .dwm SXHKD, and we'll clear this out so we can actually see. Uh, and we're going to vim into sxhkdrc, and we'll go to the bottom here, and we'll do, uh, let's see here, uh, we're going to do control, I believe, ctrl, plus, uh, I don't think I have like an, uh, the letter i, I can do control i, would work, uh, actually control i won't work because that would get me like italics and something, so that won't work, control alt, plus I would probably work though. We'll see, and then what we wanna do is just ta add some space here. I think I need to remove space here. A couple space here and do C S dot S H. Okay, and we'll write this and we'll reset start SXHKD, which is done by super escape on my system. Now if I do control alt I, that actually doesn't actually work. And I know exactly what I did. You actually have to get, you can't just run that script without actually going through and doing it in a terminal. So that was, <laughs> that was me being a dumbass. You have to tell it what terminal to, to install. So we have to do oh, alacrity, that'll work, dash E, CS dot SH. That should work. I think that will work. I am don't think I need any like quotation marks. I don't think so. No, that should work. So if we go back here to the... That should work. All right. Let's try again. Super escape to restart. SXHKD. Alt, Control, I. And it closed right away. Why did it close right away? Because it runs the script and then it just closes. A few moments later. Okay, so I've discovered what I need to do. I've done some research and... I had no clue that this would actually, you know, have to be done. So I've learned something right alongside you. So I'm going to go back through and uh, edit my script. So I'm, I'm going to edit the script in, um, we'll just do the SX, cs.sh here, and then we'll copy back over. So at the end of this, what we want to do is use the command read. And basically, or at least the way the literature says, it should keep the terminal that it is opened up in uh, open when it's done so if we and then we want to add a couple extra spaces at the end so we'll r write this and actually write and quit this and then we'll cp cs.sh to slash you you actually have to do sudo sudo we'll do this thing here again and enter our password okay now if we do control alt and i our cheat sheet is there. Now, one of the cool things about using Alacrity, and that's the reason why I've tried to use Alacrity, is that Alacrity allows you to go through and change the class name of a specific terminal. So, if we go back to our SXHKD file, but first, what we'll do is we'll close this, and if we do man Alacrity, what we should be able to do is somewhere around here is find the thing here, and we can go through and change the the class of alacrity within our DWM or SSHKD thing. And what that will allow us to do, and I'm not going to do this on camera because rules are hard in DWM. They're very confusing. But basically, what by using this dash dash class and calling this something like, a, let's actually, I'll just go through and do this. And here at the bottom, if we do this dash dash class thing, And we do um, cs.sh. I and actually we'll do cs. I think that was the 
the syntax. Uh, I'd have to go back through and check. Okay, so let's go back here to 8. We'll do um, man alacrity. Again. Look at the... the so it's... It was... There, okay, so no quotation marks. It's just the new class period. So we'll just do CS... CS and that should work and basically what that would allow you to do is go through in your DWM configuration file and then create a rule for that class so if we save this I wasn't gonna do this on camera but we should actually be able to do it if I could if I'm not, I don't know a lot about DWM rules so it's not something that I've learned a lot about because I just I don't use them uh, but I should be able to do this so if I could see into my dot config suckless DWM and we'll vim into our config dot def dot h uh, actually, apparently I already have this open, so we'll abort this and go to the right... So we have this open. So if we go up here to the rules, and basically what we want to do is make it so that, that our cheat sheet floats uh, and appears in the center. It may not appear in the center if you don't have uh, always centered uh, the, the patch installed. So, But we should be able to... Right here is where our rules are. So what we want to do is copy this one like right here. Okay, and we want to change the class to CS. Okay, so the CS should be the the class name. And the instance would also be CS, but we should be able to change that, leave that as null. Okay, and then we want to go through and change this to 1. Okay, and that should work if I'm, if I'm doing this right. Actually, that's not the right one. That should be still be zero. It should be this one here. Is floating. Should be one. Okay, so we don't want because zero should be false. One should be true. If I remember right. So save this. Now I'm not gonna be able to show you this and see if it works because I'd actually have to go through and compile this and log out and log back in because I don't have it set up to actually live refresh DWM. But if I've done it right and I think I have, every time I go through and hit Control Alt I to get my cheat sheet that should come up as a floating window uh, kind of like a, a, a scratch pad so um, I will try that afterwards and I will let you know in the comments below if I it, if it actually succeeded uh, but uh, that is it uh, that was a really long video <laughs> for what it was it was supposed to be like a 15 minute video and I'm sure I'm going to cut some of this out so it won't actually be uh, an hour long because holy shit, holy crap it's like I didn't expect it to be an hour long I, I was injured by foam during this video it's how long it's been I mean the the strength of the double-sided tape has failed completely during this video that's how long this video has been going on so uh, thank you for watching uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. At Facebook, uh, you can follow me on Facebook at the LinuxCast. And you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll see you next time.